What is good out there, YouTube? It is your boy, DJ the Chef. I am the leader of the Degenerates. Now, welcome to this channel. We're not going to get a big introduction today because we got a lot of stuff to talk about. We're going to break down how to get better at run defense in Madden 22 because it's been frustrating me. So I wanted to give this tip to you guys. So let's go ahead and get into the video. So first and foremost, make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button. Right now we are going into practice mode and I'm gonna show you guys basically some general run fits and teach you guys how to get better at shooting gaps, how to get better at stopping the run and a bunch of other different things. We're gonna operate today out of the Miami defense. I like this defense because it has big nickel and it also has 335 wide, okay? So first things first, let's make sure that auto flip defensive play call is turned on. This ensures that the strong side of your defense matches the strong side of the particular offense. Now in years past, this didn't matter too much, but with the run fit system that Madden introduced a few years ago, this means a lot and it will help you stop or at least slow down some of that defense. If your offensive op opponent flips the play, you're gonna wanna flip your defense as well. You don't wanna get weak box, which basically means that your strong side of the offense is going to the weak side of your defensive formation. This means that you don't have the numbers. So first things first is turn on that auto flip defense a play call and make sure that you're understanding where the strong side of the formation actually is. Okay, so the second thing we're gonna talk about here is basic run fits and understanding what your defenders are trying to do so you know if they're doing the right thing instead of just complaining, all right? So we're gonna come out into a big sky uh, cover three, so big nickel cover three, I'm sorry. And just doesn't matter whether you're in cover three or cover two, I'm just gonna show you basic run fits and how they work. So if I was to pull this up right now, you're gonna see a F and a C on the field. F is for your force defender, C is for your cutback defender. Basically what this defender is responsible for is making sure the plays don't get outside and he's gonna try to spill everything to come back to the linebackers, right? So these guys are all gonna flow this way and this guy's also flow this way and his responsibility is to come here for the cutback, okay? He's not gonna come down here. His responsibility is to come here for any cutback and fill this lane here. And again, this guy's responsibility is to come down here and force, right? Keep his outside leverage and force everything back and not to be able to get outside. If this guy gets reached, it's over for you. Sideline is gonna be a wrap because he's your force defender and he's lost, he's basically lost contain, right? So his job again is to make sure everything cuts back in to the guys that are flowing across the field, okay? Let's go ahead and reset this really quick. So we did a reset and I wanna show you guys something else, all right? If you were to hold your L2 button or your trigger button and press X and B, you're gonna see different run fits on different sides. So for X and B on Xbox, they're gonna show you left and right. And for square and circle on PlayStation, they're gonna show you left and right. So square is gonna give me left, uh, circle is gonna give me right. You'll see that this F and C are changing depending on what side the run is going to. So basically if I press square, which is gonna show me the left fits, you'll see that the force defender actually becomes that outside purple zone. And if I was to press circle, you see the force defender actually becomes that outside safety. And this is why it's so important, right? to have your strong side on the right side because your force encounters are going to change. So right now, this guy is my force, the back side is my counter, all right? Now that brings me up to my next point and we're gonna just reset one more time here. So that brings us to point number three, understanding those run fits, okay? So you'll see that I have those two force and cutback defenders. And right now I have eight guys in the box. I have all of my linebackers, my safety, and then my nickel corner. And I have all four of my down linemen. This is gonna tell you where you should go in order to fill the run, who has force, who has counter. Now let's say we base align this. So I'm just gonna base align and we're gonna see the difference inside of the run game. So we base align here, look what happens. My force defender now becomes my safety on the straw on the left side, right? And if I was to press circle, my force defender now becomes my outside linebacker. So off gate, just base aligning made this guy the force defender, and it also took this guy out of the run game. Let's look at it again. You'll see that we're we are now out of the run game, not just audible. So let me go back to let me reset you'll see that this guy is no longer part of that run game when we base the line. This guy is also no longer part of the run game when we base the line. So if you're having issues and you're coming out in base alignment, stopping the run, that is probably why, because what you're doing is you're changing the people who are responsible 
for stopping the run. And you'll see that here. We go ahead, we're, we're in normal line, we have eight. If I was the baseline, we now only have seven. Those two guys, we completely took them out of the run game and we committed them to the pass game. So this is the fourth and final tip on how to get better at the run game. This one is gonna take a little bit longer to break down for you guys. We got a lot to go over. But if you want this in more detail, slow it down, showing you how to shoot gaps in different formations, make sure you become a tier two and above member. And I'm going to put out a more detailed video just for the people who are a member of the degenerates, okay? So let's go ahead and get down into this, all right? We're talking about shooting gaps right now. I'm gonna, we, we're gonna break everything down that we just talked about. We're gonna talk about how we shoot gaps. So first and foremost, let's look at defense. We know that we have right now eight people inside the run game because we're not base aligned. If we base aligned, we're gonna take people out the run game, it's gonna look like this now, right? So now we only have what, six people into the run game because we base aligned. So here we go. It's a lot better, right? If you're going to stay in the run game, but you want this guy to come over, it's a lot better to just move him instead of base aligning because you'll see that moving him keeps him in the run game. So let's say you want this guy to be back. Here is better to just go like that instead of base aligning on runs. If you think it's gonna be a run. Now, if you think it's gonna be a pass, that's a whole different story. Passing, yes, base align because you're gonna put those people in the pass first uh, mindset and they're not gonna worry about the run. So here we go. We're going to show here. And what we're gonna do is on offense, you'll see that right now the Mike backer is considered the right middle linebacker. I'm gonna show you what happens. We should get a double team to the play side and the rest of the uh, guards or tackles should get up to those linebackers. So there goes our double team, we fall off, we get up to that middle linebacker. Now, this is how you get better at stopping the run. This is the ultimate trick. Now that you understand all that stuff, this is how you get better, okay? Come into very common formations that you see, gun bunch. Um, you see this gun where people run level cells. Come into these gun formations, come into I form close, strong, go into those formations where people like to run out of, even those single back double tight end formations and practice against them because the run fits are normally exactly the same depending on the runs like stretches, counters, um, traps and dives, okay? So let's look at this here. You'll see I get a double team immediately here, right? I get a double team here. Well, if I'm getting two double teams because I have so many people in a run formation, what gap opens up? This gap right here opens wide up. Every single time this gap is gonna open up because of the run fits. Now, this guy could absolutely come off and come up to him. It, he very well could do that is what you'll see will happen. But if you time this well enough, you'll be able to shoot this gap right here and you'll be able to make the play. So for tip number four, tip number four is super simple, but it takes the most time to, to master, right? Tip number four is coming into these common formations that you're having trouble with that people are running against you a lot. Run your base defense, right? So I'm gonna run my base defense, move everything over, get everybody into the box, and you're basically just gonna see what happens where your run fit should be and how the offensive line is, is trying to attack you. So there goes that same play again. Let's look at it one more time. So here we are in instant replay. And what you're gonna see is again, where's that gap at? That gap is right here, okay? Now I wanna show you something. You see how this defender is coming up right here and then this guy is going into that box to get that backer right there. We're getting that double team. The double team, like I said, always comes to the play side. Now, I wanna show you what happens if I take all those guys out of the box and base align, okay? So now let's look at the difference of if we were to base align, okay? So let's base align. I think our offensive line was, our D line was sitting here somewhere. Now let's base align and see what's different now that we're taking those people out of the run game. We actually get two double teams instead of one. And the reason why we get those two double teams is because we're taking people out of the run play. So remember last time, our tackles got doubled on the play side and our backside tackle was free but you'll see this time with baseline this guy doesn't do anything because he's this guy right here doesn't do anything because he's playing pass first and now my safety here instead of playing pass first he's coming down towards the line of scrimmage immediately on run instead of playing pass okay and that is because he's in the pass game this guy does nothing he just sits there and gets blocked Again, let's look at it without being based line, and then let's look at it, and then you can be able to compare it a little bit more. So this is not based line. you'll see what happens. We get a single team there, we can double, boom, our safety backs up first. 
So here we go. We're going to look at it again. You'll see here now this guy is cut back, right? We know he's away. He's cut back. He's moving to the cutback. That's why he's coming inside. Last time he kind of just sat outside and he, he gave up his entire body. We get the double team play side like we were expecting, but backside doesn't double team, right? So last time we got the double team right here on the backside. We got a double team there because this guy wasn't in the play, which gave this guy's the ability to double. So we still get our gap there. He comes off, but look at our safety, this safety here. He's playing pass still because he's not in the run game because we didn't base the line. So again, that is, that's putting everything together, right? Is knowing that this gap is gonna open up because we have more people in the run game. So boom, I can hit that gap right there because there's more people for them to block. Even with that guy being outside the line of scrimmage, because there's more people for him to block because I did not base the line. And even if I bring him over like this, because I did not base the line, I have more gaps to shoot. So you'll see that now I have that gap guy there. When he was out here, he didn't have, he, he's, it's harder for him to get to his gap, right? So we can even bring him here if we really wanted to. So if you have a five down offense alignment, you're always gonna get a gap basically backside of the run, which is why you always see people come from here to shoot the gap here, because what happens is the backside of the run is where that center goes to make the double team on play side. So you'll see here, I still get that. I still get the egg gap, even though I missed it because center always, I won't say always, the majority of the time, the center is going to double team play side. So you'll see even here, we double team play side, we get one-on-one -on -one here. And since we since we basically based a line here, we'll see that guy's not in the run game at all. But we get this backside a gap. No one's there. We can shoot it. We just we just kind of messed up because we made the hole too tight. So again, with shooting this backside a gap, you want to make sure that you don't that you that you wait a little bit or at least take yourself out of the actual blocking game because if you come too fast you're gonna get picked up okay so i'm gonna show you what i like to do i like to kind of bring myself over here so that center knows not to come off and pick me up i like to let them get engaged so there we go now we can come in and we can hit that hole even though i miss i'm going to show you the difference of if you were to like start at the line of scrimmage and how that will affect your actual ability to shoot that gap okay so here we go i'm going to do the same thing but i'm going to get a little bit closer to the gap maybe like right here and watch what watch just watch what happens watch the difference so as soon as that ball snap, I'm gonna come. You see that center comes right off and picks me up, okay? So that's tip like 4.57 is you have to be a little bit patient and you'll see the difference is when I'm still like closer to that line of scrimmage, that center chips and he comes right off and picks me up. So as soon as he engages, he comes right off and he picks me right up because I'm technically, I'm a, th I'm a closer threat to him. So now what I always suggest is, is run your favorite defenses against different formations. Okay. You need to run against an eye tight. You need to run against strong. You need to run against gun. Those need to be the three that you practice the most against and figuring out where the gaps are going to be. That's what I did. Okay. You're going to run your base defense, figure out where the gaps are, figure out how you can move your offense line around to create certain advantages for you to create the gaps that you need understanding the things that we just talked about so we have four down defense alignment we have eight people playing the run if we don't base line, they also have eight people blocking but we technically only have seven people playing the run because our cutback defender is out of the run game because he's waiting for the cutback so no one's coming all the way out here to c gap because the run is not going to c gap i mean he's technically a wide nine if he's playing all the way out there so we only have seven to their eight inside of this particular run game now what we're looking at if we were to count is our center he's going to play side but he's going to go to play side middle linebacker he's uncovered right right now he's uncovered so our tackle and guard can take the two um, ends and D tackles on both sides. We actually can get a double team with our tight end, which is amazing. And our center should be able to get up to the linebacker. And depending on the play, whether it's a dive or a zone run, our fullback is gonna be able to help with force or he's gonna get up and get on that left side linebacker. So let's look and see what happens. Our center, our center goes exactly scot-free. We get a double team, exactly what we said was gonna happen happen and i'm i mean i didn't see this before it's literally just it's just football at this point right understanding how the game is programmed is if you look here we have we have enough numbers to double team on this side right we can double here chip to this guy and, and, and set that edge with the tight end the center is uncovered which means he can get 
up to that second level and get either him or him okay i would much rather him actually get this guy here instead of getting this guy because my fullback can pick him up if it's going to be uh, a zone run and these two guys are basically out of the play they get hit one time they're gonna actually chip so you see we just let this guy go because like i said it's not going there so he's out of the play they chip on our d tackle here and then he, 52 is trying to get up to that other linebacker which is what you'll see here and our center scott free he's chasing so we don't get a good set here that tight end kind of just doesn't set where we want him to set but nevertheless we're good to go we see what we see now if you wanted to shoot a gap it's really hard to shoot a gap right here because all the gaps are basically taken you can create a gap though right so on zone runs you absolutely can create a gap we don't have a gap because one this guy was left out of run game so now they had the numbers and our center was basically unblocked so you can do two things you can shift your line over and see what happens and see if you can create a gap let's do it one more time so right there our d tackle gets right into the backfield right he gets right into the backfield there let's watch and see what happens he gets into the backfield because he can't get reached he can't get reached or he tried to get chipped but he jumps over the chip so they do the same thing they let go of my end they can't get that d tackle we don't really have a a zone yet so we didn't we didn't really create a lane we just had a really good play created by our d tackle the issue is that they're still double teaming and that center is still free so now let's take the center away so if we put two people inside of a gap that center cannot be free he's gonna have to block somebody at the line of scrimmage you'll see there he blocks somebody at the line of scrimmage let's see let's see where our, we create our gap so if we go back you see that center has to block there this guy comes this guy still is not getting blocked he's coming free we have a lane maybe here and here but we're gonna probably get reached so still we still haven't created exactly what we wanted yet with this zone all right so here we go run gaps again we need to slant down but we need to take that center away there we go i should be able to come right underneath this guard yep i was able to come right underneath that guard to stop that run right there I did, it wasn't clean but you'll see that i was able to get right underneath him to stop that run and what happened was that center has to block that d tackle he's going to blow that up and this backside guy is coming to get me but again he can't get me right so just changing a little bit of our formation forcing that center to have to come block is what made that play happen so again you guys got to understand your run gaps you got to understand your run fits and you have to understand the numbers if i know we're going play side i have to make my numbers play side okay if i know that they're trying to go outside i need to make sure my force defender can't get reached move him out a little bit like this and just take numbers away from the play now you're not gonna be able to do this every single time but after somebody is running a play over and over and over again you guys should be able to stop the run and get better hopefully these tips have helped you guys out i know it's been a lot of information i'll try to clean it up make it at least presentable make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button it's been your boy dj chef it's been love as always love we out here peace